Now, I understand for the information I have here, first of all, that the 206 area code, which covers Seattle, which is where I happen to be based, is the worst area code for getting illegal robocalls. Is that true? And do we have any idea why this is? Uh, yeah, so it shows up in our uh, in our data that, that that's the area that has the uh, most number of uh, what we call negative robocalls. It can be either nuisance or, or high risk. Um, the types of numbers that we typically see going into that area are, are, are with, you know, Amazon. Uh, you know, there's an Amazon Prime scam. There's an Amazon work opportunity scam as well. Uh, in, in addition, you know, we've seen, you know, Microsoft scams come out of, come into that area as well, where they'll, they'll claim that there's, you know, something wrong with your Microsoft account or, you know, there's something wrong with your security, please call, please call us for a refund and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll process that. Of course, they're going to ask you for your personal information and then, you know, try to defraud you of, of, um, of, of your money. I think probably the third big scam that we've seen in that Seattle area is, is pretty, is, is pretty common across the U.S., which is uh, an Apple scam where people are, bad actors are calling out and saying there's an issue with your Apple ID and, you know, we need, we need some of your personal information to go and, to go and fix that. Obviously, Apple doesn't call out when you have a problem. But typically, the only time that they will call you is if you've initiated a ticket yourself online. So, um, you know, those are kind of the top three, three, four scams that, that we've seen in the, uh, in the Seattle area. Now, what are the carriers, uh, AT&T and Verizon and so forth, and the mobile device companies like Apple and Samsung and the FCC and Congress, what are they doing to try and reduce this problem? I understand they've been quite active lately. Yeah, so the FCC has been quite active. Congress, Congress and the Senate have been been quite active, giving uh, the FCC, um, you know, trying to give the FCC more power. The FCC has really uh, opened it up for the uh, for the carriers to start blocking uh, more calls um, in the network, and and uh, and so uh, that's you know that's one thing that that you know I think we'll, we'll see. There's also a call call authentication framework called Stir Shake, and it's kind of like a you know a notary republic saying yes, I can I can verify that this this phone number is is a, you know a, a good phone number and coming from the correct place doesn't however know the intent of that call so you could have a bad actor using a legitimate phone number but all of the tier ones you know Verizon AT&T Sprint T-Mobile they've committed to uh, adopting this you know framework by the end of the year and so it'll make it much harder for people to spoof or to you know dial out a number that I'm not really that I'm not really calling from so that'll help and then the FCC has also put put pressure, and and the care and the tier one carriers have responded in, in you know giving out uh, the ability to uh, to provide you know like an advice of risk and and you know warnings for free to their users using their uh, using their network based technologies that that they have. So for example, Verizon has Verizon Call Filter, which they've made available for free. Um, as an opt-in basis to all of their all of their customers, and that'll that'll continue that'll continue to expand. What can consumers expect now in terms of how these FCC and carrier actions might reduce robocalls, and uh, how do they make it so that important calls can still get through and only the scam calls are blocked? Yeah, that's a good question. So, uh, you know, obviously it's having an impact on the call originators as well that that you know have legitimate purposes to. To call out, there's a lack of trust in the you know with with voice communications now. So uh, you know the analytics providers like like TNS, for example, um, you know do have robust processes that that uh, you know all allow the call originators to you know ensure that that you know those legitimate calls are are are, go, are going through. So um, again, we you know we have. We have processes, and I know that that uh, you know the big other analytics engines that sit behind the carriers, uh, you know, have have the same capabilities as well. 
How do uh, carrier robocall detection solutions differ from popular robocall blocking apps that consumers typically download from Apple app stores and others? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, typically, the typically the the carriers apps are are going to be a little going to be a lot more sophisticated. They're going to know uh, what numbers haven't been assigned um, to their uh, you, you know, they may, they may be AT&T numbers or they may be Verizon numbers, for example, but they know that that's not an active working number. So they'll have more information than an OTT app will have. Uh, I know that our analytics is, you know, real time in the network and we see network events across, you know, multiple, you know, hundreds of different, different carriers. So uh, with that, that gives us the intelligence then to you know, see these actions in real time and, you know, when when a network event's happening, uh, you know, from a particular number, we can see that and then um, uh, be able to, uh, uh, you know, to be able to then put a, you know, potential warning on that. So one of the things that we've seen is, is that, that, you know, neighbor spoofing where the first five or six digits look similar um, that we've seen seen that kind of evolve into something called snowshoe spamming, which is uh, trying to spread your footprint out very carefully so it'll try to avoid detection. Well, that's going to be difficult for the OT, you know, the over-the-top apps that you see that aren't integrated with the network to, um, you know, make those particular, make those particular changes. So you'll see, you know, you know, multiple numbers being used by these bad actors. They may make, you know, a thousand calls off of one number, a thousand off of another, and, and, you know, continue to kind of burn and churn through those numbers. It's going to be very difficult for the apps that aren't integrated with the network um, at a major carrier to, you know, kind of keep up their, their whitelist, blacklist uh, that's going to be, you know, accurate. So that's why I think, you know, the carrier apps are going to be a little – are, are going to be, you know, a much stronger alternative than, you know, what you could just purchase through the app store. Can you give us a couple of the latest robocall scams and tactics that are going on right now? I mean, some of these tactics are so old, it's amazing anybody still falls for them. Yeah, so, you know, one of the, you know, one of the one of the one of the big scams that I mentioned was the, these technology 